People ask me all the time, Joe, what's the best lighting to use so that you don't have glare or reflections on eyeglasses? The answer is so easy. I can use any kind of lighting arrangement I want to. I just set my lights, do my test shots, and then make my subject take off their glasses. Easy peasy, problem solved. Huh? They wanna know how to do it with the glasses on? Ooh, well, in that case, in this video, I'll show you how to do it with an umbrella, a softbox, a beauty dish, and even bounce flash. And so that you don't have to remember all kinds of crazy tricks, I'll teach you about the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Stay tuned. Hey gang, photographing people with eyeglasses, especially in the studio, can be a pain in the butt, right? You wanna do cool lighting, but you don't wanna see reflections of your lights in the glasses. Honestly, it doesn't have to be that difficult, especially if you remember a simple piece of physics. And the key word there is simple. The challenge of photographing people wearing glasses is not a new one. And the best solution that is available today is to understand how light works. In fact, that's the same solution that was available decades ago when I first photographed a person wearing glasses. You know, throughout my career, I have come across loads of photographers who think they have tricks for photographing people with glasses. The most common one is to tilt the glasses down. And honestly, that's the dumbest idea ever, unless the person wears really big oversized glasses. The moment you start to tilt them down, the physics guarantees that the top of the glasses start to encroach on the top of the eyes and makes the eyes appear smaller. I've also seen people teaching miracle Photoshop techniques that don't really work that well. And honestly, you don't want to be wasting time in Photoshop trying to fix glare. Certainly, if your subject only wears glasses some of the time and they're willing to remove them for the photograph, that solves your problem. Don't be afraid to ask your subject if they would prefer to be photographed with the glasses on or off. Most people don't wear glasses by choice, so you're not going to offend the person if you ask politely. Whatever you do, for the sake of your subject and for the sake of your confidence, don't go into the shoot fearful of the glasses. That will only cause your subject to lose confidence in you and the nerves will get in the way of your paying proper attention to what you're doing. It's just one more simple challenge. And remember, all great photography is an act of problem solving. So if it's your first time and you don't have experience lighting eyeglasses, don't hesitate to tell your client how important it is not to have glare. And explain to them that you're going to test several lighting arrangements in order to get the best one for their glasses. Nobody's gonna complain about that or think that you don't know what you're doing. It's all in how you present it. Remember the 80-20 rule. When you're photographing people, 80% of your effort should be focused on psychology and your subject. 20% is the photography part. So hopefully it goes without saying, this is something worth practicing before you have a real subject or a paying client in front of your camera. So let's get the physics out of the way first. I mentioned the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. We all understand that light basically travels in a straight line. For all of you hardcore science geeks, I know, light travels in a wave pattern which has curves, but the net result is a straight line. So the angle that a beam of light hits a reflective surface, that's called the angle of incidence. The angle of incidence determines the angle that the light will reflect away from the surface. That's called the angle of reflection. The angle of reflection will always be the same as the angle of incidence. All of this means that light is fairly predictable. So as long as you remember this one simple rule of physics, you'll always be able to keep your camera out of the reflected light when you're photographing someone with glasses. Now hopefully you've already figured out that this little physics tidbit will help you with more than just eyeglasses. Pretty much any reflective surface, mirrors, stainless steel, glass, windows, they're all going to reflect light the same way. So the solution is to make sure that the angle of the light hitting your subject is different from the angle that you are photographing them at so that the reflected light misses you completely. That sounds pretty simple, right? Actually, it is. The real challenge comes in the fact that most eyeglasses are not flat surfaces. They're curved. So you will actually have several angles of reflection for every light source. 
So let's put this into practice and see how we solve the problem without tricks and without Photoshop. One solution is to use broad lighting as opposed to short lighting. Now in case you're not sure what that is, broad lighting is when you light the side of the face that is closer to the camera. And short lighting is when you light the side of the face that is further away from the camera. Broad lighting will generally have better results with eyeglasses because the angle of reflection is traveling away from you and your camera. Short lighting is much harder to use because it places your camera right in the path of the angle of reflection. Now if you're like me and you shoot lots of images straight on, using the angles of incidence, I can place my light at a height that will cause the angle of reflection to miss my camera lens. You can see here with the light right next to and just above the camera, I get a horrible reflection in the glasses. If I move the light much higher, the reflection is completely eliminated. Or if I move it more to the side for a dramatic effect, I also eliminate the reflection. I can even add a second light using the same principles. Two lights next to the camera, two reflections. Move them high or move them wide and the reflections are gone. In this setup, I have a LumaPro 180R with a LumaPro umbrella set at about 55 inches high, just above my subject on camera left. For reference, there's also a second LumaPro 180R on a mini boom arm above and slightly behind my subject for a hair light. You can see that the reflections in the glasses are unacceptable. By moving the strobe up to 74 inches, I've eliminated the glare in the glasses. Here's the same lighting setup with a Westcott shoot-through umbrella, and then again at 74 inches. Glare problem resolved. Here's a LumaPro beauty dish set at 55 inches. Not so good. And here's the same beauty dish at 74 inches. Problem solved. A medium-sized Photoflex softbox in the vertical position at 55 inches. And then again at 74 inches. And there's always bounce flash, highly underrated but very effective. Here the speed light is about 8 feet in front of the subject and aimed at the white ceiling halfway between the flash and my model. Here's a 4 light setup with two medium sized soft boxes in front and set at about 74 inches. And two speed lights behind the subject simply aimed at the white wall. Here's a 4 light arrangement with the medium sized soft boxes off to the side but slightly in front of the model and then one speed light on the floor to create the glow on the purple backdrop and one above and behind her for a hair light. And a three light setup using bounce flash as the main light and a speed light with orange gels on the floor aimed at the black backdrop with another speed light above and behind her as a hair light. Hopefully you're seeing that the possibilities are endless. There is no one right way to light a person with eyeglasses and you do not need tricks. If you set up your lights and take your test shots and realize you have glare, remember that since we're dealing with simple angles of reflection, the solution is most likely in one of three options. Most of the time, you'll only need to change one of these to solve the problem, the position or the angle of your light, the position or the angle of your model or subject, your shooting position. So keep it simple and only change one thing at a time then take a test shot to see the results before you change something else. Don't tilt the glasses down. Have your subject wear the glasses properly. Don't do all kinds of awkward head tilts or have your subject drop their chin to avoid your misplaced light. This is the best way to have your subject feel awkward, which means they will look awkward. Don't move your lights too close to the camera lens. We all love catch lights and well-lit retinas, but the closer your light is to the camera lens, the more likely it is that your lens will be in the angle of reflectance. Don't panic, it's just another problem to solve. Ask your subject if they prefer to wear glasses or not. If they don't mind taking them off, your job just became easier. Make sure the glasses are pushed up on the nose and properly seated. There's nothing worse than a photo of someone with crooked glasses or glasses halfway down their nose. Explain to your subject that glasses are a tricky thing and you want to get the light just right so that they look their best. The easiest solution is to keep your light high, above the glasses. But remember, that is not the only solution. If you like to work with short light and broad light, remember that broad light is much easier than short light when it comes to avoiding reflections on eyeglasses. Practice before you have to do it for real. 
Remember gang, your best shot, it's your next shot. So keep learning, keep thinking, and keep shooting. Adios.